Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. We are coming to you live from downtown Chicago and we're going to be talking about the Walgreens story. My name is Brian Malloy, I'm with Apogee. My handle on Twitter is Landlessness. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Joe Rago. I'm a product manager in charge of the Walgreens developer program. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at Joe Rago. Hi guys, I'm uh, Nick E.B. I'm one of the lead iOS developers here at Walgreens. Our webcast and all the webcasts that we do are available on YouTube at youtube.com slash Apogee. All of the slide uh, content that we walk through today will be available on SlideShare at slideshare.com slash Apogee. We encourage you to join the very popular and fantastic community on the Google group called API Craft. Also, there is a, uh, I should mention about the API Craft, there's five cities in the U.S. have API Craft meetup groups, Detroit, Chicago, New York, New England, and San Francisco. So if you live in one of those cities, we encourage you to go to meetup.com and look for API Craft in your neck of the woods. And if you don't live in one of those cities, reach out to me on Twitter about creating one in your own area. We have a conference coming up. We were doing a little plug here for uh, in November in San Francisco, the I Love APIs conference. It should be really fascinating. In fact, I think you'll probably be there, huh, Joe? That is uh, that's the plan. Yeah, All right. looking like it. So at this point, we're going to hand it over to Joe, and he's going to walk us through some really interesting content. Thanks, Brian. Um, so yeah, so the title of our, our webcast today is, you know, connecting your app to over 8,000 stores. And kind of the goal of the webcast conversation is really going to take you through uh, what we're doing here at Walgreens with an e-commerce division, how we made the decision to, to launch an API program, kind of how we got to that point in time in our, in our life cycle as an e-commerce organization, and, and then obviously a lot of details around what we're doing with our API developer program, how we're working with developers through um, events and different marketing tools. My colleague Nick here is actually one of our early adoptions from, from a third-party developer perspective, so he's actually, he's actually going to speak a lot about how, uh, how it was working with Walgreens from the flip side uh, as, as opposed to my view of kind of the, the program organizationally. So I'm sure many of you have seen, uh, seen a Walgreens across the U.S. or one of the largest retail uh, presences across the country. We're also the owner and operator of the Dwayne Reed um, pharmacy chain that's based in Manhattan uh, heavily. Uh, we have 8,000, over 8,000 stores across the country. Uh, a few fun facts for everybody. So there's a Walgreens within five miles of 75% 70, of the U.S. population. We have Walgreens in all 50 states plus Puerto Rico. We have over 6 million daily visitors walk through our stores. I'll talk about the fun fact with the mobile refill uh, in, in a second. I don't want to ruin my uh, infographic I got coming up. And uh, as far as it relates to uh, the photo piece of our, of our store business, over 99% of our stores have an on-site photo lab. Uh, as far as what Walgreens does uh, within our e-commerce organization and really across the board, it's really omni-channel as far as our strategy goes. We have a direct mechanism, so a Walgreens customer could go to walgreens.com. We also own and operate drugstore.com, beauty.com, visiondirect.com, skinstore.com, a lot of dot-com sites out there that are part of the Walgreens organization. We also offer direct mail solutions for our photo products as well as our pharmacy prescription business as well. Uh, in regards to cross-channel, we have a, quite a few initiatives that are going on right now. A web Pickup is a program that we piloted in the Chicago, uh, San Francisco, and Indianapolis markets where you actually could go either online or on your mobile phone to m.walgreens.com, shop actual inventory for a local Walgreens store, and then have that actual purchase order um, bagged up and waiting for you for pickup at a local Walgreens. Um, we also offer photo and pharmacy orders direct from online or mobile to our stores. Uh, refill by scan is one of our most popular features from the mobile app perspective. We'll talk about that shortly. Uh, we also offer in-store ordering. So if you're in a store and a product is out of stock or a product variant or a, a kind of a version of that product is not available, you could actually order in-store uh, to have that product shipped directly to your home. Uh, and home delivery is something that's coming up that we're working on being able to do both um, traditional mail order delivery as well as actually home delivery from the stores. From an enterprise perspective, we've been working on a lot of different initiatives that kind of cross the chasm across the organization. Uh, last September, we rolled out our first ever loyalty program called Balance Rewards. It allow you, allows you to earn points for purchase in the, purchases in the stores or online, uh, prescription refills, many other ways that you can earn uh, loyalty points within the Walgreens uh, businesses. Uh, we have a weekly ad, very popular both in paper form as well as more increasingly in digital formats where you could view the uh, promotions going on at any time during a, during a given week. Store locator, store inventory, um, definitely uh, very popular, very uh, well used products to tell you where a store is and what the inventory is at those stores. And we're doing more and more it, within the mobile space related to mobile coupons. So we were one of the first companies to work with Foursquare and actually have in-app um, coupons. If you checked into a Walgreens, I believe it was with uh, Arizona Ice Tea. We did a uh, pilot last year and a couple other 
uh, similar programs in the past as well, and definitely more and more um, in the digital marketing space. Uh, as far as why uh, Omnichannel is so important to Walgreens, this kind of is very, very, very quick and easy chart to understand as far as our average annual spend per customer. So using our store only customers as a baseline, we see a dramatic increase in the average annual spend per customer as we go across the multiple channels within the Omnichannel organization. So uh, a customer that shops both on stores and online, we see a three and a half times lift on their average annual spend all the way up to those that are using our stores our online sites and our mobile properties seeing a six times lift. So definitely, you know, a huge benefit we're seeing from the customers within Walgreens that are um, using all of our different uh, platforms to, to shop and visit our stores. This is pretty staggering numbers. This, um, as this data was uh, being compiled, was it surprising to folks that it was this drastic of a change or was it kind of anticipated when you put the whole strategy together? I, I think it, you know, I think it, you know, help, help to validate some things. I think definitely, you know, it was a very pleasant surprise. And I think the more and more we dug into it and kind of saw it definitely as we, as there were more and more interactions, um, you know, the improved and increased results were definitely very, very pleasing. Fantastic. And what, what, for me, what I love about this is just being an outsider. Like for me, the Walgreens brand always meant like the one step you put up earlier, like a neighborhood brand. You could always walk to a Walgreens no matter where you were in, in pretty much about any city in the country. And I guess the same thing. It's like, that sense of readily, even though it's switched to digital, you mm -hmm. know, whether you're online or you're mobile, you yep. get a very co compelling experience. Yep. That definitely, way. and that, that's definitely one of our goals is to kind of, uh, you know, make sure we're serving the customer through whatever mechanism that they want to um, visit or work with Walgreens. As far as some, some statistics around uh, traffic across our digital properties, so we see over uh, about 1.7 million visits a day to our properties, and that's across Walgreens.com, Drugster.com, Beauty.com, and all of our other properties. It's about 50% uh, traffic from the PC and web but definitely uh, an increasing amount of traffic from mo our mobile web and app site and apps. So we see about 40% of our traffic through uh, the mobile channel. And uh, I guess considering uh, tablet as well, you know, another 10% across that. So it's pretty evenly split now between our, our traditional web traffic and our mobile tablet traffic um, as far as visits to our, our properties. Uh, in relation to the pharmacy side of the Walgreens business, so uh, Going back just you know three years ago in 2010, we were seeing 10% of our online re prescription refills were through the mobile channel. You know, fast forward three years later, and we're up to a uh, tad over 50% of our online refills through the mobile channel. So definitely a huge shift in, in where refills were occurring, and one definitely that from a mobile perspective we we've liked seeing. Um, in relation to the mobile uh, refill feature itself, we see uh, more than one refill every second. Uh, from a mobile device. So just when I took me that five seconds to say that statement, we got five refills. We also have a very strong presence across um, many of the social media sites that are out there. So we have over 4 million likes on Facebook, over 600,000 followers on our Twitter handle, at Walgreens, and over 215,000 likes across Foursquare. A very active and engaged community from a social media perspective. Uh, in relation to Walgreens mobile and our apps, so we have currently 10 apps and mobile websites that we have across our mobile ecosystem and more than 50 partners through our developer program, which we'll dive into shortly. For the Walgreens brand itself, we have an application for all the major phone and tablet platforms. We have our beauty.com iPad app, which is the first actually unique app we launched within the drugstore beauty.com side of our business. And we also own and operate the RX Mind Me uh, pillar reminder application that we're actually getting ready to roll out an update to uh, in the next few weeks. So now stepping into the, the Walgreens developer program and kind of how we decided to launch that program, why we did it, and kind of the success we've seen thus far uh, with the program. So if we go through kind of the revolution of Walgreens from an e-commerce organization perspective, you know, going back to the mid-90s when we launched Walgreens.com as an actual more pure e-commerce transactional website, not just a, kind of a landing page that was out there you know, very much in the early 90s. So Walgreens.com launched in the mid-90s. In 2007, we launched our mobile website, m.walgreens.com. That was kind of the first foray into the mobile world. Uh, 2009 was when we got into the native application space with our launch of our iPhone app in late 2009. 2010 was kind of where we launched our first really truly unique feature on the mobile side, which was our refill by scan feature. That basically took something that was previously, you know, it's fairly complex. You had to either call on the phone or go into a pharmacy, and we made it basically a very quick, a few second scan of a refill bottle, a refill label to refill your prescription at Walgreens. So definitely one of the early great features we launched from a mobile perspective. Um, 2011, we got into the, the SMS area where we launched prescription refill text alerts. So you could actually sign up to get a text message when your order, when either you have a prescription that's due for a refill and is ready for a refill, or actually once you actually submit a refill request, get notified once it's ready for pickup. 
2012 was when we launched our developer third party facing developer program. So we launched in July of last year, so just a little bit over a year ago with our Quick Prints program. We also have a pilot we're doing with our uh, healthcare clinic appointment scheduling. And most recently, this past February, we launched our prescription API program. And I'll definitely dive deeper into Quick Prints and the prescription API program in the, in the coming slides. So Quick Prints launched, like I said, in July of 2012. We launched initially a, two versions of our SDK, an SDK for iOS and an SDK for Android. We had five partners that launched with us, five partner apps that launched with us at launch. So we actually had um, apps that were live when we made our initial announcement about the program. And that was something that was very important and really kind of a foundation for our, our launch strategy was, was actually get a small group of developers to work with us early on, work through kind of all of the initial kinks on hey, you know, from a Walgreens perspective, we think everything's good to go, ready to integrate, but obviously we learned a lot of things through our interactions with our, with our launch partners, um, great feedback from them, and really the first version we put out there in the marketplace was so much better because of that um, launch group of partners that we worked with. Um, for Quick Prints, it is a developer gets paid business model, so you'll hear a lot about um, API business models, both from a integrating developer perspective as well as an API offerer perspective. Um, so ours is a developer gets paid model for Quick Print. So a developer earns a revenue share commission on every order that is sent through um, to Walgreens. And it's based on when the order actually gets picked up and paid for at the store level. So um, there is a transaction element that kind of makes the order revenue share eligible. We've seen great growth. You know, in a little bit over a year, we've seen 12x growth with our number of partner applications that are out there. So Definitely something where we're looking to work with as many developers as possible and also work with, you know, uh, as many, you know, well-known photo-based applications as we can. So it's kind of catering to both sides of the spectrum. Um, you can see a sampling of the different applications that have integrated with Quick Prints here on the slide. Otherwise, if you visit developer.walgreens.com, we do have a showcase blog where you can see all the different integrations that have occurred. All the orders related to the Quick Prints program are all tying in our, our greatest asset, which, was our, which is our 8,000 plus stores. Um, so we have 8,000 stores across the country. Um, like I said earlier, 99% of those stores have photo labs. In our stores, we could do a variety of different products, um, everything from our standard print offerings, which is your traditional 4x6, 5x7, and 8x10 size prints. We also are one of the first, and I don't want to say only retailer office, but I'm pretty sure that's the case, but we offer uh, square prints, 4x4 and 8x8 sizes in all of our stores. So I haven't yet seen anyone else do that at a store perspective. But so why would you want a square print? Um, there's a, you know, I think it has to do with there's a site uh, or this app uh, came up called Instagram that's kind of making some news in the in the marketplace and, uh, you know, definitely was a, uh, a a driver, a catalyst, if you will, for us offering square prints uh, in our stores. Uh, so that's really true. That was not a product offering before, but because Instagram shows that aspect ratio, Walgreens made it happen in the little store. Yeah, and I think, you know, it was wow. kind of a... Uh, you know, definitely a, a driver across not only, you know, Walgreens offering square prints, but also if you look at, you know, many of the thousands and tens of thousands of photo apps that are out there, um, more and more folks started, you know, either only offering the square aspect ratio or offering it as an option. Even if you look at the evolution of iOS, um, you know, many of us have probably played around with iOS 7 and, you know, this ability to take a square, a square picture hmm. um, in your initial photo photo capture is now front and center with the new iOS layout. So definitely it's been more and more of a um, you know, driver in the marketplace and really kind of essentially helping to drive and bring back you know, fo photo printing from a activity perspective. Fantastic. Um, you know, we also offer collage prints uh, across all of our stores. And then in about half our chain, we have what we call our creative photo labs, which can actually do really unique in-store products like canvas prints, uh, poster size prints, photo books, photo calendars, uh, both single-sided flat photo cards as well as folded um, traditional fo uh, photo cards. So a wide variety of products that we offer, and we're trying to tie in um, all those products that we offer at our store with our API developer program. Gotcha. Want to knock off a couple of these questions? Sure. So come in. Cool. Uh, so the first is from uh, Shihari. He asks, is there a native Android app for Walgreens, or is it only iOS? No. Um, so from... Uh, the Walgreens brand perspective, we have a Android phone app and an Android um, Nexus 7 tablet application that's out there. And then from our developer program perspective, we have the uh, Android SDK for, for Quick Prints. And then uh, related to our prescription API, it's, uh, it is, we don't have an SDK model with that. It's just a straight API, but it could be leveraged across um, any platform that, that's out there. Fantastic. Question from Sam 
Th thanks for that question, Sridhari. Uh, Sam, thanks for your question. Did Apigee develop Walgreens API program or was it done by Walgreens IT? I mean, the, the, I guess the decision to launch an API program um, you know, was, was done through uh, internally within Walgreens. Um, Apigee is our platform provider for our um, API gateway. So we worked obviously very closely with Apigee as we initially launched the Apigee gateway and framework for our own internal API usage. So our, our APIs that are running through our applications are running through, through Apigee. Um, you know, we're both a, I guess you could say a, um, off, you know, we offer up our APIs as well as we, you know, we use our own APIs. We, uh, as they say in the profession, eat our own dog food. So we, our, our own mobile apps are really one of the first uh, clients, if you will, of, uh, of our API program. Cool. Chris asks, what roadblocks did you find when selling an external API program to internal business and technology stakeholders? Thanks for that question, Chris. Yeah, no, great, great question. Um, you know, I think you know, there, there's a little bit of a, I guess you could say, a, the fear of the unknown. You know, you, you're taking technology that you're using um, you know, either internally or inside your own applications, and you're really opening it up to the outside world. And, you know, kind of when you first have those conversations, there's a lot of fear of, you know, you know are we going to get hacked or are we going to, you know, um, you know, is it going to expose data that we don't want to expose? All, all those sort of kind of questions you could think of that would come up um, when you were trying to really take in a foreign idea and, and trying to get buy-in for it. Uh, I, th I think kind of two, two factors that really helped us in, in getting an API program uh, developed and launched is one, uh, we, you know, we luckily had a very strong foundation of API usage inside of our, our websites and our mobile apps that were already out there. So the concept of having APIs drive features and functionalities wasn't new. Hmm. So it was, it was a great benefit to be able to take the APIs we already were using internally uh, and, and leveraging the Apigee uh, relationship, expose those out to, to third parties through our developer program. Um, you know, kind of the areas we've been able to quickly move and offer external APIs have been those, those parts of the business that have a strong foundation in APIs and others that we're working on building up so we could do that as well. Uh, and any, really anything we're working on now, we try and make sure that we have it with a very strong uh, API foundation, even if we're not planning to do an API program from the get-go, if that foundation's there, it's very much easier to build a house on it later on versus starting the other way around. Sure. So that sounds good. Were there any major blockers along the way? Or was, um, it, or was it pretty smooth sailing for you guys? I don't want to say it was, it was totally smooth sailing, but you know, I think from a from a approval or um, buy-in perspective, that that piece you know worked out very well. We obviously had to work with our uh, internal development teams, internal you know organizations to kind of actually plan out and, and, and move from idea to actual reality. Uh, obviously, implementing and launching our Apigee Gateway was a very kind of key part, kind of the keystone moment, I guess, if you will, of, of going from con you know conception to, to reality. Um, and then you know obviously, uh, as far as the API program goes, it was you know a lot of uh, a lot of grassroots efforts that we'll kind of talk about more when we talk about our developer marketing and developer event strategy. Cool. So uh, kind of a, a success story. So uh, it was about around Halloween time uh, last year, last fall, where uh, we were working on our own Walgreens mobile applications and our, and our big features within the photo space for, for that holiday season. And our own app, we're going to be the ability to do canvas prints and poster print products from your, from your phone and from your iPad directly to our stores. And the, the one product that kind of got left off as far as we ran out of time, we couldn't do everything, was, was photo cards. Um, so it, it was a weekend right before Halloween. I was driving and I got a call from our, our photo, head of photo and he's like, you know, Joe, I want to be able to get developers to do uh, photo cards for, for the holiday season. And I was like, you know, yeah, holiday 2013, you know, no issue. We'll, we'll get we'll get on that. We'll make it happen. He's like, no, like, you know, holiday like 2012. And I'm like, oh, it's like, you know, six, eight weeks away. So, um, you know, very quickly we had to kind of put some ideas together on how could we quickly get our third-party developer community, both existing partners and potential partners, to try and innovate and build something really, really fast. Um, so we decided to have a holiday photo card contest. So um, the goal was really to obviously supplement our own Walgreens app features by uh, having third-party apps that offered photo cards. Um, we had two partner applications, Cardmento and Versaries, that rose up to the challenge and did the integration. Um, for this holiday photo card contest period, we actually offered a higher revenue share um, then usually we actually doubled the rev share for the duration of the of the contest, and then we basically had a bonus prize around essentially who sold the most card orders. Um, so the quicker that you know one of them launched and the other was obviously an advantage to them, but um, it was all around kind of drive driving awareness of the product, driving awareness of their applications, um, kind of getting 
as much as we could out of that short holiday season. So there were some unique promotional opportunities that were kind of a pilot we did um, with this contest, not something we do um, all the time related to the program, but really kind of trying things on, seeing what works, what do doesn't work. So because this was a unique product that we did not offer in our own application, we actually used some technology we have in our app where we actually could have temporary promotional icons. Mm -hmm. And we actually had an icon for create a card that linked to a mobile landing page where we actually said, you know, essentially, hey, uh, we can't do holiday cards in our, in our own iPhone um, app, but you could either download the Walgreens iPad app to do so, or you could check out our, our friends at either Cardmento or Versaries. Um, and Cardmento um, was a brand new application. They did not exist prior to this contest um, being around, and they went from essentially being a unknown brand new app to being number 89 in the photo category, I think within about five or so days of launching. So, um, you know, they did, they did some great work on their side as far as marketing goes. We obviously had the in-app icon for promotional purposes. Uh, we did some promotion via our Walgreens main Facebook and Twitter accounts. So we definitely, uh, it was a collaborative effort to, to get the word out about the, the holiday photo cards and was, I think, a great success story. That's a great um, sort of year. ecosystem win-win story right there, right? Yep. You helped them pop, bump up and they helped you get some stuff done. Yeah, and we're doing something similar, um, you know, right now, actually. Um, so if you go to developer.walgreens.com slash contest, we're actually running a, um, a little bit of a different angle, um, but we have a contest around our brand new creative products, uh, photo books, photo calendars, and folded cards where we have a $2,000 prize um, for the best integration with each of those products, as well as any of the ongoing uh, revenue share that through actual orders uh, with that. So if you go to developer.walgreens.com slash contest, you can check it out, sign up for the contest, and hopefully be uh, a success story for next year when we're doing another webcast. <laughs> right, great. Getting into kind of switching gears, so, um, you know, Quick Prints was really our, our first API offering overall, um, obviously tied closely with our, our photo printing business um, and allowing any mobile app out there to print photos to our stores. Our second API program was probably in what you would call the more traditional area of Walgreens, our, our e-health pharmacy prescription refill business. So the goal really here was to take, take the idea around our, our own refill by scan feature and giving the ability for a third party app to kind of do the same thing. They don't necessarily have to do a, a scan, but kind of that's where the kind of idea originated from. So why would a third party app integrate the Walgreens prescription API? So it is a different business model. Um, this is not a developer gets paid business model. There's a variety of different reasons why we currently don't offer a direct revenue share on the, on the prescription refills, but one that we feel is still very compelling to consumer facing health applications. So one, helping to increase medication adherence. So whether it's through the Walgreens channels, through third party apps, anything that globally we can do to help patient medication adherence is a good thing all around. Also, number two is increasing customer engagement. So before this program was out there, if someone was using a uh, consumer health application like uh, Pocket Pharmacist, who happens to be one of our, our early launch partners, and they were putting all their medication history information into that application, when it came time to refill a prescription, uh, if it was a Walgreens prescription, they really had no choice as a application user to either, they had to either, they had to leave the Pocket Pharmacist app, they either had to call a Walgreens pharmacy, go online, go on our mobile channels, go to the pharmacy, they had to disengage from their experience. This allows that actual prescription refill interaction or prescription transfer interaction to actually happen inside the third party application and whether um, there's other mechanisms of, of how a health application could uh, monetize a customer, keeps them sticky, if you will, within that, within that third party app. And also just through our, our ability to increase awareness of the third party app, so our co-marketing capabilities we have within the Walgreens developer program is another advantage um, to why to integrate our Walgreens prescription API. As far as some highlights about the prescription API program, so it, it is actually two unique API offerings. There is a prescription refill and a prescription transfer API that's available, so they are two distinct ones. Some of our partners have both in place, some of them only have the refill when it's totally up to the integrating app which one they, they think is the best fit. Uh, it is a cross-platform API, so there's not a, a platform-specific SDK available for it, but it's something that's a really, if you take a look at the documentation, it is really a very simple uh, API as far as how it works. So we decided to go a different route at, at launch versus our quick prints that started off with the, the SDK models. Um, kind of a success story with the prescription API highlights is one of our launch partners was an iPad application called HealthSpec. Um, they launched with us back in February. Um, they actually were awarded um, a... Appy Award at the South by Southwest Festival this year um, for, it was either uh, best health app or best uh, pharmacy app, I can't remember the exact word, but um, they were uh, quickly awarded for their, 
for their work on their, their initial uh, iPad application, which did include uh, the Walgreens prescription API. So not, not the, the whole reason why, but definitely it was great to see some notoriety early on for one of our, our launch partners. So we have one, uh, apparently a budding photographer, Zach Ellis, asks, uh, are there prizes for consumers of these apps for best photos taken with your partner apps? <laughs> no, no, not, not right now. Definitely an interesting idea. Um, Walgreens photo as a whole occasionally has um, things like that. Um, not necessarily monetary in nature, but I know they had a, a contest a few weeks ago where um, if you were submitting photos on Instagram with a certain hashtag, um, the winner actually got free Instagram prints for a year. I think it was uh, a certain amount of photos per day. Um, definitely a good idea. Not one we're doing right now, but definitely one to consider in the future. Cool. Thanks for that question, Zach. Philip asks, how long did it take to implement your APIs from inception to execution? Sounds like it might be a little nuanced for you because you kind of had some APIs in different flavors, but what, what kind of like, maybe what's the scope for somebody who's thinking about doing this? Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to say, because it, it is so kind of, uh, you know, inter, inter, intertwined with what we were doing already. Um, you know, and a lot of it had to do with the actual kind of setup of, of the, the infrastructure, the Apogee platform, things of those nature. I think I would say from the time we actually engaged um, developers and we're actually working with partners in a, kind of a beta version of our APIs through when we launched the actual program publicly was about three months. Um, obviously there was a lot that happened before then, but the kind of from being able to kind of actually start working directly with developers to launch was you know, really kind of in that March, April of 2012 through July 2012 uh, time period. Well, wow, pretty quick then. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm probably making it sound like it's quicker than, quicker than it was, but you know, definitely it was one where um, you know, our goal was to move as fast as our, as, as our de uh, third party developer community could go. So that's definitely something that we still are striving to do. We, we have to be able to be as agile as our, as our partners are. Okay, cool. So you, you have the slide where you talked about sort of um, the growth, say, of wallet share per customer going from baseline up to 6x if they're using all your channels. Okay. Ragul asks, has Walgreens seen, I'm guessing, net new users come in via those API integrations that otherwise might not have been considered uh, Walgreens customers? Yeah, I mean, I don't have any any specific numbers, but I think I think you know, in a simple terms, yes. I think you know, one of the goals was really, and one of the reasons why we did the the Quick Prints program was, you know, we were seeing less traditionally. We were very much concerned with having uh, customers go to Walgreens.com, register for a photo account, upload their photos to the Walgreens.com site, and then print them out either through our our website or through our mobile offerings. Really, the genesis around Quick Prints was really. How can we tie in with all these third-party apps that are exploding out there in the marketplace and offer an ability to print to Walgreens from those third-party apps? So just like you see, you know, um, share on Facebook, post on Twitter, all the other mechanisms that you see in a share function, we want to print to Walgreens really to be synonymous with kind of the print function within an application. So uh, really, the whole goal was to get new customers into Walgreens by working with the third-party developer community. Fantastic. Thanks for that question, Rahul. Rajneesh asks, how much revenue was generated so far from the Southwest partner app that consumed the Quick Prints API? That might be a yes. hard thing to disclose. But. Yeah, yes, yeah. so <laughs> I, I can't disclose, you know, the actual, you know, um, numbers around the, the third party partners that we had launched with us. You know, all I could say is that it's, it's been, you know, been substantial enough that, you know, it, it definitely has, has made an impact and, and, and people have taken notice of. Uh, the benefits of, of working with the third party communities, both from you know actual orders and revenues, as well as really a lot around you know the innovative spirit of the third party developer and how we've been able to been able to see things that um, third parties have done that have really been things we don't even thought about ourselves, as well as being able to launch new products you know initially with with third parties. So with the contest I described, those photo books, calendars, and, and, and cards, we're actually not doing it you know right now with our own application, but we're letting third parties. I uh, kind of take the lead on seeing um, seeing how those products get responded to in a in a customer setting. Fantastic. Keith asks, how are your API teams, or how how are the API teams structured across Walgreens, and can you give a sense of the size scale in terms of number of people as well as what functions they perform, um, prioritization, reuse principles, build out, performance testing, product management. Yeah, there's a lot there. And do you have any do you have any, do you have any higher uh, open head count to, to grow the team? We we do actually. Uh, <laughs> good good segue there. Um, so as far as how the team, the API teams are, are structured, so uh, you know, web service or APIs really are, like I said, really a foundational part of what, what we do here within our e-commerce, uh, both web and mobile organizations. So really, within I guess you could say the development teams that exist in all the different areas of, of Walgreens e-commerce, you know, web services are definitely a very a very key part of, of those organizations. So from 
I guess if we're referring to the Walgreens developer program team, um, we have myself in kind of a product management um, slash kind of strategy lead. Uh, we have a development team that actually works solely on the APIs or the SDKs or the uh, mobile pages that are part of our, our APIs and SDKs. We have a QA team that works on testing not only the features that we're offering, the APIs or SDKs we're offering, but also any, any partner that integrates with us because at the end of the day, uh, the end result of an API integration with Walgreens is a real refill to our store or a real photo order. We take our onboarding testing process, you know, very seriously. Um, so we go through a process that, you know, really ensures that both the integration from the developer side is correct as well as with being sent to the store. Now, I, I, while I say we take it, you know, very seriously, which we do, it's something we, we try to make as quick and easy as possible. So actually, um, my colleague Nick here actually started off as being one of the uh, lead developers for one of the Quick Prints applications that we had uh, with Just Family, as well as actually launched his own application, Discovery, with us uh, soon thereafter. So actually, I'll let Nick speak a little bit about uh, his, in his interactions with the, the Walgreens program. Yeah, so uh, how I got on board with Walgreens is I was working for a small startup, and uh, we were primarily a photo management app, and we our product roadmap was always print, print, print. We want to print books, we want to print photos. Uh, Etc. And so around the same time, I was, you know, independent developer on the side. And I also was building up my own app called Discovery, which is an Instagram client. And I'd always thought print, print, uh, you know, as my end goal. And so when we started researching APIs, there was a few APIs at the time out there that did print. Um, and so we started digging through documentation, uh, doing experiments with SDK, seeing what was possible, seeing what, uh, you know, what was possible as far as what we could do with their APIs and what our grand vision was. And uh, we stumbled across Walgreens and it actually provided everything that we needed at the time. And because I was living here in Chicago, uh, Joe actually invited me to come down and meet with him. And, and we talked about what uh, the startup I, I was working for, we called Just Family. So we talked about what Just Family needed uh, as far as a printing uh, standpoint. And uh, you know they were super helpful as far as helping us integrate the, the SDK get it going, testing it, uh, you know, pretty much from start to finish, Walgreens was, was on board uh, as far as just making sure that we were implementing everything right. And it was such an easy process that for my own app, because like I said, I was an independent developer, I knew right away I was going to use Walgreens. And uh, so since I was using the Instagram API, the 4x4, 8x8 uh, photo format was so compelling because obviously that's w what you want to print to. And as an independent, uh, independent developer, Obviously, I was worried about overhead and, and costly APIs and, and all that, where Walgreens API was free to implement. Uh, it was super easy to, to get it going. And from time to finish, as far as me actually putting into in my code and getting results at the store, I mean, it was, it was around two weeks a week. You know, it was super quick. And uh, I couldn't have been more happy with the results as far as the print quality. So it was so unlike uh, Instagram, Walgreens is not a tech company primarily. So when you started investigating the Walgreens developer program and API, yeah. did you have some kind of built-in skepticism? Like, are these guys going to have any idea what, what I need and what they're doing? Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, to be honest, when I first started thinking photo photo APIs, Walgreens didn't even cross my mind because I'm thinking photo eyes. I thought, like, Shutterfly, I thought uh, Snap, uh, Snapfish, I think, was one of the other ones at the time. And so when I heard about Walgreens through, through the company I was working for and started exploring their API and their documentation, just super happy with what was available and, and what I could actually do. And so, yeah, when, when you think of Walgreens, you, you know, I thought pharmacy and, and all that, but their photo, photo centers and the products offerings that they had were were great for what we needed and, and uh, we were super uh, happy with, not only with, with the end quality, but with our app, you could place an order and within an hour you were able to go there, pick up the photo, and so the results were, were great. Fantastic. So, um, you know, developer marketing and, and developer events are really a, a huge part of not only the success we've had thus far with the developer API program, but anything we're going to have, you know, moving forward. So definitely um, a key part of what we're doing and a key part of what I, you know, think about or worry about on, on a daily basis. So getting kind of into the specifics of it. So really as far as marketing your developer program, and this could be applied to anyone out there that might be working on something similar, it's really um, twofold. One, you want to build awareness of your developer program. There's over 13,000, at least at last count, uh, public APIs that are available. Obviously not everyone's gonna be a direct competitor from an API perspective, but there's a lot to choose from. There's a lot of free APIs. As Nick said, there's a lot of printing APIs or there's a lot of you know different APIs that are out there. So how does your 
how does your program one get noticed, um, and how, how do you get get that awareness and, and get a developer to even investigate or spend the time to research your API offering, um, and also to encourage integration. So obviously, one way is to offer a revenue share. So uh, with our Quick Prints program, we actually have a direct revenue share associated. It allows the third party developer to either, you know, one decide to have a free app versus a paid app. They could decide to not have, you know, just normal ads and focus on the printing piece and keep it much more of a pure customer experience so there's obviously different different things that come decided into that model and then also to kind of showcasing more end user value so i think our prescription api program where it um, shows more of the the adherence factor and the um, keeping customers engaged factors another way to encourage integrations of your developer program uh, functionality as far as the gold standard or things that i i truly treasure as a as kind of a the manager of our developer program really press releases and tech blog coverage or opportunities like this to speak uh, with many of you out there about what we're doing with the developer program, those are, um, you know, really go gold in my book as far as things that value they drive to to our developer program. So you can see here a sampling of the different um, publications that have written about the developer program, and it's both through one proactive press releases or proactive relationships we form with some of the different um, tech blogs and tech sites that are out there, as well as those that just organically pick up. Um, you know, they might hear about a press release, they might hear about. Um, a third-party integration. Um, we, you know, we use both press releases, our developer.walgreens.com site, as well as our Twitter handle to kind of get as much information about what we're doing with the program and what our partners are doing as we can. Developer events. So I think you know, from our perspective, you know, we, I think the thing we focus least amount, le least amount of focus really is around where an event is. So uh, we're we're here in Chicago. Um, obviously, if events are local in nature, that's great, but really it's about finding the events that are the best fit with your API offering, both from the, the scope of the event, the audience of the event, the potential developer interest at an event. That's kind of really what I use to help determine what events I want to be a part of or what events I want to speak at or sponsor, um, et cetera. So we've done a, a variety of different events. They're not, even, they're not all even included on this slide, but definitely um, we've done events from coast to coast uh, as well as ones here in the Midwest. Some that are photocentric, some of that are uh, more e-health, health related, some that are just simply API topics in nature. So um, we've had a little bit of a, a calm summer, but we're definitely gearing up uh, coming up in the fall months with our um, API strategy and practice two conference in uh, October. And then looking forward to the I, I Love APIs conference in November as well. And definitely more, more opportunities to get in front of developers um, and API professionals uh, in the coming months. Cool. As far as steps to launch, it really, um, you know, kind of boils down to four, four key things, or really three key things, and then the, the launch step really is one, um, simply going to developer.walgreens.com and signing up for a user account. It's a free, free site, free account to register for, very quick and easy to do that. Um, once you actually have created a user account, then you're able to request an API key, and you can indicate whether you're looking for our prescription API or our print API. Um, we, we review those uh, as they come through. They actually come into my my inbox and I um, look at the API key, see what you want access to and, and get that set up for you. Um, step three is really around completing our, our QA or staging environment uh, onboarding process. So really what happens here is we've had, you know, a, a good amount of API key requests. We've had, you know, a good percentage of those that have converted to actual live apps, but not everybody who requests a key goes through an integration. So we initially give you basically the steps and the tools to start an integration right off the bat. And then once we know that uh, an integration is actually moving farther along and is ready to test with us, then we'll give you some uh, unique credentials, unique IDs that allow you to actually be, um, that you would actually go live with it at some point in the future. And then we go through our, our onboarding testing process. Usually, you know, once we know that you're ready to test with us, um, takes, you know, anywhere about, you know, two to three days, um, you know, max to kind of go through the testing process. Really, I found, and Nick could probably verify, it really is, is more on the developer who's integrating our technology to kind of de determine how they best want it to fit within within their existing user experience, within their existing app framework. And um, depending on how far along that that idea or that development is, when they actually integrate our technology will kind of impact how long it is for them to launch. So if someone's kind of thought through the entire experience and they have it ready to go and then they plug in the quick prints or the prescription APIs, then it's a fairly short time to launch. But we, you know, we want to make sure that both for the integrating developer as well as for Walgreens that everything's um, you know, verified and good to go in our in our test environment, and then um, let them go launch into production from from that point. So very cool. And we actually um, with the, the photo piece, so we actually have a full um, Nick kind of referred to it a little bit. We have a full photo lab here in our Chicago office for only for testing purposes. So 
when you're doing our, our photo printing testing and you actually are submitting orders, we actually print those out and verify that they look good. And then we let you do the same thing with a real store. And then we say, hey, now you know, submit to the app store and let customers actually interact with it um, there as well. Very cool. When you were putting together the sort of the launch steps here, did you look around at state of the art, how other folks were doing things, or was it intuitively obvious? How did you come to this uh, this flow? Um, kind of this, yeah. You know, I, I I wanted to really make it as kind of concise and quick as possible. And obviously, there's 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 some things that happen in the middle here, but really just kind of wanted to, um, you know, a lot of even today, for example, there's a lot of information we talked about, and even looking at documentation or things like that, you can get kind of overwhelmed. And I really wanted to kind of simplify. You know, really, what the process is to go from conception to reality. Right. So you put that effort into it, and Nick, as you, as the cons the customer, right, as the developer, you found the flow to be pretty straightforward. Yeah, I actually went through these steps myself, and they were not only were they easy, but the results, as far as like requesting an a API key and getting a response back, was I think the same day or the next day. So I was able to start coding pretty, pretty much right away, and uh, implementing their SDK, and and then getting it going with my app. So yes, I think you know now we could definitely you know I want to thank everyone for for taking the time to, to listen in here. I know there's many other questions that have come up via the uh, the chat interface, so we'll definitely take some time to, to go into those. Um, as a follow up, like I said, our, our developer portal, so developer.walgreens.com, is where you can find all the information about our 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 Quick Prints program, our prescription API program. We have our developer showcase blog where we showcase all of our existing integrations. We have our developer contest that you can find there. Um, on the home page as well as any other information about the developer program site. Um, our actual email address from a team perspective is devportal at walgreens.com. You can follow us on Twitter at, at Walgreens API. I can't confirm if I am the person who tweets from that or not, but <laughs> you can probably figure it out in, in, in due time. And then my direct information is on here as well. Um, so with that, we'll kind of open it back up to some of the questions Sounds from good. the uh, from the audience. And you do have uh, an open role. You're looking for a developer community manager. We do, we do. So the team the team is growing. We we want you. Um, we have an open role here in our Chicago office for a developer relations manager. So definitely someone that's going to be a key a key part of the team. They'll be um, doing a variety of different activities. They'll be working very closely with all of our both existing and, and new and new developers who are working on integrating our technology into their applications. They'll be a part of. Um, events or hackathons we go to to kind of speak from a technical perspective. It's really the the one area that I can't myself do. I could, you know, I could do the product management, I could do the business development, I could speak about, you know, what we're doing as a program perspective on, on things like this, but uh, unless it's a very, very simple HTML query, I, I, can't, I can't solve your technical <laughs> questions. So that's where we're looking for some help here uh, to help offshoot um, what my actual main development team is working on. So if you're interested, um, you know, shoot us an email. Um, otherwise, it's on careers.walgreens.com, but otherwise, we could get you the direct link to learn more about the, about the role. Fantastic. Cool. So let's, let's drive through some of these questions. So up here in the, uh, in the chat window, let's grab the first one. Keith asks, uh, regarding the development community, can you share what types of challenges you had and what you had to overcome in making the model effective? Yeah, so I mean, I think the first, um, you know, the first hurdle we, have to over we had to overcome are at least the one that was most kind of prevalent in my mind is I think you take the, you know, the history of Walgreens, you know, 100 plus year old company, you know, so many stores across the country. And really, I think the first perception from a developer perspective is you know, what's the angle Walgreens trying to play here? Why are they speaking at this conference, speaking at this event, especially early on when it was um, our API program had just launched, people were really wondering what was our angle, what were you we trying to gain out of the system? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, having to overcome that and show, um, show what we were doing um, definitely, you know, we, we totally value all the feedback from a from a technical perspective. We got them from our um, our devel development partners and being able to actually take that and quickly work it in to make our APIs or SDKs better. Um, from a from a business model perspective, you know, I think it's, it helped that the first offering uh, with the photo printing one had a direct revenue share model, um, and, and it's something that I think was very very cut and dry sales pitch or, or kind of pitch, you know, as far as um, really integrate this technology, have print orders through your apps, get a revenue share. It's, it's really, you know, that simple. And it, it, a lot of it's around really ease, right? So ease to read and understand what our documentation allows the technology to do, ease of the actual integration, uh, ease of how we pay our developers. So everything is done electronically. We have a, a daily dashboard that our development partners can see where they can see their previous day's sales orders. Cool. Um, they could get paid via direct deposit every month. Um, I think... Really, you know, with the program launching, you know, in the last year, um, it was obviously great to get the program out there to launch two different programs. And I think 
in year two, it's really around, I, I, I would say, st strengthening the foundation, making it even more easy to integrate, more easy to understand, improving our documentation. Obviously, we're looking at other areas to expand into from an API program perspective, but um, I think really continuing to build on what we did in the first year. Fantastic. Uh, John Fitzpatrick asks, uh, so is there a strategy moving forward to use one, a one code base mentality for all devices moving towards something like HTML5, or are you going to stick with, the, with multiple native devices? Um, I guess from, uh, from the developer program perspective, it's one that um, we d as part of the ease, if you will. Um, so with the quick, both with Quick Prints and the Prescription API, we have a kind of a hybrid model where the actual integration of the technology is happening on the, on the integrated developer app. So whether their app is a native app or um, an HTML5 app, that's kind of up to them. Sure. But then the actual, if you call it, checkout process happens on on Walgreens hosted HTML5 pages, and, and part of that is one, um, you know, we're able to make changes and enhancements to those pages without requiring any work by the third party developer. We also handle kind of the, the customer checkout funnel, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of makes it, it kind of separates, you know, as far as what someone has to worry about as far as an integration goes and what we have to worry about as far as an actual um, conversion checkout goes. Um, you know, as far as the our, our apps go, you know, right now we have, you know, the native apps across all the the various platforms that are out there and you know, continue to evaluate new opportunities that, that come up. Yeah, fantastic. Roger asks, will you be offering an API for your product inventory and deals uh, based on location? I'll, I'll say is stay tuned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds like we went into secret territory there. Sragav asks, are you considering responsive or mobile first design in lieu of native apps and leverage? It's sort of similar to John's question. Yeah. Any thoughts about that? No, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, you know, obviously we have, um, a lot of different apps that are out there. I think it's evaluating what's the, the benefits of, of you know the totally native hybrid technologies and, and kind of finding you know I think right now we're we're not we're open, we we work with both models we're open to both models. It's kind of figuring out what's the you know really first and foremost what's the best for the either the Walgreens application user customer or the the third party application customer and, and really thinking about that first and foremost and then. Um, you know, leveraging that with, you know, kind of from a development or technology infrastructure, infrastructure perspective, what makes um, the most sense. Obviously, there's a lot of quick, you know, you know, quick, you, you hear about, you know, build once, deploy anywhere, that obviously sounds great, but it's right. not always the case, and there's also pros and cons with that as well, and then obviously there's more work involved with having everything be totally native, so it's kind of finding the best of both solutions sure. and leveraging it accordingly. Yeah, if you're going to take omni-channel seriously, the omni part means a lot of hard work and a lot of multiple device support, so yep. it's great to hear. Lee asks um, a question around HIPAA, which is a government regulation around uh, like health and medical data. The question is, how much of a challenge was it to meet HIPAA data security requirements with respect to Apigee and APIs? Yeah, so um, at least as far as the programs we've offered to date, um, none of the programs that we're offering to date, even the prescription API, even though it sounds like it gets into the HIPAA territory, um, the, what we're, the data that's being transmitted and what we're doing with it is, is not um, entering into that area as of yet. Um, you know, one of the reasons we chose Apogee from a um, partner perspective is we, uh, you know, we did our uh, initial evaluation of different companies that were out there and the IT security review and all the other things that, that kind of go on. And this is even preceding myself joining Walgreens, but um, you know, Apogee offered a solution where we could actually install the Apigee gateway on premise uh, on Walgreens servers in our own environment, and that was one of the you know key decisions that kind of drove our usage of Apigee. And um, I know there's many other tools and technologies that um, Apigee has. You know, if we ever did get into offering up data, that would be considered uh, in, in the HIPAA space. So we haven't we haven't gone that direction yet, but definitely you know if we do, we know that um, we have the foundation in place to make sure everything is as you would need it to be. Uh, the next one is from Rahul. Prior to the open APIs, did you have APIs that were only for partners, and how did you manage them? I, I guess you would say not, not really. I mean, there, I think there were some things that were happening, and this is preceding me, so, um, but I guess as far as how we truly would think of APIs, at least today, uh, probably no. <laughs> gotcha. So Keith asks, are these the only two APIs, I think he's referring to uh, prescription and, and photo, used internally as well? No, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of other um, you know, we're, we're very heavy on an API foundation, so whether it's our websites or our mobile apps, many of the features that are existing there are on an API foundation. So um, definitely th these were, these both were, um, these both are features that are, in our own apps are using our same API foundation. 
Um, but there's definitely you know we're heavy heavy on API usage across the enterprise. Got it. Fantastic. Sam asks a question for Apogee team: Is your team seeing a standardizing of these pharmacy APIs within the vertical? I, as a developer, wouldn't want to integrate with a Walgreens API later, a CVS API. I don't think I'm allowed to say those initials around here. Um, uh, well, I, Walmart Pharmacy API. I, I hear what you're saying. So we, we haven't done anything in the uh, pharmaceutical space. We have a product called Apex, which stands for API Exchange, and we've launched that in the telco space. Um, but stay tuned. We are we do have we will be making moves in uh, in some other industries, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Thanks for that question, Sam. Corey asks, uh, have you noticed a change in the average age of end user? through your new collaborative offerings with the third party developers? I think this question was probably asked around the time we were talking about the like button being synonymous with a print to Walgreens button. Yeah, I, I think this is more probably, um, you know, nothing we have from a true statistic standpoint, but, but my guess is that yes, we've, you know, we've seen a, a skew back towards a younger demographic as far as the, the age of the um, customers who are printing photos through our third party apps, but I think also we've seen probably at the other end of the spectrum as well, um, you know, it just it just kind of depends on. That's really what where the beauty of the program is. Whatever demographic that your your app might be catering to, you know, it, it are, are as long as there's a as long as there's photos that need to be printed or creative photo products that need to be, um, you know, created, our technology would cater to that. And I think it's really more on letting the the third party developer focus on the target demographic or target functionality they want to offer. This next question is from Ben. What are the programming languages, frameworks, technologies you use to implement the API? I'm guessing at a 100-year-old company, there might be a hodgepodge of technologies yeah, yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, there's a variety of different things, and, and I don't want to misspeak from a technology perspective. So definitely, if there's you know specific questions on different uh, programming language, languages we support or different sample code bases we have, you know, definitely you could drop a note to the dev portal team. We could definitely get into more details on, on that. Fine. So, but that's also if you if you want some more details, we can follow up through yep. one of the channels yep. that uh, yep. that uh, we talked about earlier. Great. Sri color correction, etc. Does your API accommodate accommodate that, or is that something the user expects to handle at their end? Just curious. As far as um, I'm guessing it's for the photo yeah. API. Um, so, it's 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 more I guess on the on the integrating app perspective. As far as I mean, there's some. I think there's there's some you know tools that is are in place with our photo printers as far as when they print out photos, as far as the API goes or our, our, our checkout process, it's not doing anything through that process. Um, you know, really, really we kind of, there's kind of the, the two sides of the spectrum. There's the integrating the app developer that is really um, you know, working on creating the images that are coming through to us and then our, our printers at the actual store level that are producing the, the output. So uh, from an API perspective, we're not really doing anything to transform, if you will, the photos that are coming through. Thanks for that question, Sri Um Okay, the next question is from Raghu. As an enterprise, how did you decide what business processes to have APIs and what not to? I'm guessing he, by business processes he means which, uh, like photo versus prescription, I'm guessing? Yeah, um, you know, I think we, we looked at a, a, few, a few, few parts of the business early on, you know, photo and pharmacy being kind of the, the first two. Um, a lot of it had to do with which parts of the business had a good foundation already with APIs. Um, that we could quickly leverage to expose through the through the developer program. So um, there were other areas of the business that were still building that foundation, and, the, and in those areas we decided to kind of hold off on for now. Sure. Um, and then those that did, we kind of looked at okay, what's really um, twofold? Like, what's a, a feature or a function that the API could offer that a um, a customer of third party app would be interested in? Mm -hmm. And then two, is, is there a, a valid um, business model, whether it be direct revenue or just um, utilization of it to basically make it worth worth offering. I mean, we could do probably thousands of different APIs within the organization that we could offer up externally, but if there's not really a business model around why a third-party developer would want to spend the time to integrate it, it doesn't make sense to necessarily offer it up externally. There's still a huge value in, in using those APIs internally, but something we have to evaluate. It's something, conversation I have with, you know, many interested stakeholders now that we have a few programs now, you know, everyone you know, wants an API or wants a public API, and it's kind of a conversation we have to make sure that it makes sense not yeah. only internally but externally to offer it. So you're pretty deliberate in terms of choosing what's going to go in the funnel and what you're going to put your weight behind? Yeah and, and, we're, and we're, honestly we're obviously we're a growing team but we're a smaller team so there's only you know so many uh, different programs and things we can support at a, at a single time. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Thanks for that question Raghu. The next one is the next question is from Mike. Uh, do doctors uh, slash clinics use apps based on the APIs to submit original prescriptions? 
Not as of yet. So you know, the concept of a new prescription, there's definitely you know a lot of different regulations around how a, a new prescription could be submitted into um, any, any pharmacy, not just not just Walgreens. So um, we're definitely you know staying in tune with what's happening from a regulatory perspective. Definitely something we would you know we have a prescription refill, we have a prescription transfer API. Obviously, it would make sense for us to offer a new prescription API um, if and when we're we're able to from a more regulatory perspective. I think to date. Most of our integrating apps have been consumer health apps focused. I think that's one particular topic that really would allow us to expand into working with um, developers or applications that are more um, doctor, um, you know, physician focused because that's kind of the one niche use case right now that doesn't make sense for what we're offering, but sure. definitely one that we're, you know, keeping an eye out for and seeing what might happen in the, in the future. That's really fantastic. One of my favorite things to do is after I'm done being in an Uber car is just to walk out the door without having to pay or sign a receipt. It'd be great if I could do that at the doctor's office too, yep. right? Just walk out the door and know that the description's gonna land at Walgreens by the time I get there. Yep. Very yeah. cool, very cool use case. Thanks for that question, Mike. The next question from Alonzo, this is kind of a big one. Uh, he asks, what would the business model be for building APIs? And I think, uh, just, th th you wanna take a stab at it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, kind of a, obviously a, a big one, I think, you know, in the case of Walgreens, our, our goal was to, um, you know, leverage our biggest asset, which was our, um, you know, over 8,000 stores. So the goal was all around interactions that we could offer through our developer program that would drive um, both, both orders and traffic to our stores. So I think, you know, kind of in the most simplest terms, uh, you know, increase, of, increase in traffic to the stores, increase of, of orders to the store, you know, yields more revenue, um, you know, for the organization. I think it's one that, you know, there's definitely a crossover between, you know, customers through our um, quick prints or through our prescription API program that were existing Walgreens customers. There's also, you know, I think definitely an element of, of new of new customer acquisition. So I think that's kind of been the the driver for you know really the foundation of offering up the um, the API program. And also there's there's, an, there's a non direct you know element as well as in really kind of helping to or working on improving innovation both at Internally, but obviously leveraging the developer community to help drive innovation and really uh, seeing what how you know developers could take our technology that we're offering up and really um, build on it from there. Gotcha. Peter asked sort of a related question, and it's a little bit related, I think, to what Chris asked earlier. Do you have good metrics on the ROI of the program um, to have justified the investment that you made? And I'd like to tack on like another kind of related question: is when when you talk about omni-channel, for those of us that are sort of in the technology, that's a one-to-one -one mapping, like. You know, if omni-channel, then API. Is that pretty well understood? That that's kind of the key enabling technology for doing omni-channel stuff. It's definitely a story, if you will, that internally is is gaining more and more traction, uh, especially as we're looking to do um, more and more things. You know, across our different um, parts of the you know the omni-channel business. So I think it's one that you know what we've done with our photo business, what we've done with our prescription business. I think that the the story or the foundation that the developer program has laid is really helping to, to build out the business case or doing more similar things across other parts of the organization. Good. Cool. Um, a question from Phil. This is kind of related to some of the, the feedback that Nick gave earlier. Do you offer support for developers during integration as we're starting to build out those apps? Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's a huge part of what we do on a daily basis. So we have, you know, like I said, a, um, you know, we're obviously hiring for that developer relations manager role to, to have a, a, a full-time, but right now, you know, my my development team and my, my QA team members are um, definitely a huge part of their daily um, daily roles, which is basically helping to support um, the developers during integration, during testing, post integration. So it's a huge part of what we do. We have daily daily status meetings. Where we talk about hey, here's the partners that are in the queue that we're working on. Um, we use you know a couple different tools to communicate with our third party developer, and then we've worked on improving that whole communication process to make it as efficient as easy as possible. But I obviously I think Nick Nick attested to it earlier. Um, but I think it's definitely a huge part of what we do. We want, we want developers to be happy with the support, both in the, you know, the, the quality of the support they get as well as the timeliness as well. Excellent. Great question. Thanks, Philip. Joe, Nick, thanks a bunch for taking your time today with us. Obviously, you know, doing an API program, well, it transcends the technology. It takes a lot of uh, work and well-considered thoughts and the right people in the processes. And you guys have clearly shown here that uh, there's fruit to the labors, that it all works out well if you you do it the right way. So thanks for your thanks for your efforts and thanks for hanging out today. No problem. Thanks for having us. All right. Bye now. Thanks everyone for hanging out today. We'll talk to you next time.